Hello all my truth seekers. In this video, I will discuss Megan and Harry's docuseries. What came out of it? What did we learn? Quick note, I'm treating this video like my true history lesson videos, but a little differently. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. We learned some inside details about their courting days. We know that Prince Harry tested Meghan's true feelings about him early on before truly committing to her by inviting her to one of his off-the-grid camping trips. She endured it, loved it, and he fell in love with her more. Then we got inside details about her conniving father, Thomas Marco, and her lying sister, Samantha Marco, who released a statement saying that Megan's father wasn't going to watch the series. Oh. We also learned that the royal family's actions and demeanor in public are the same as in private. Oh, yes. You know what? Just take a look at these clips. Okay, the wrath that Samantha has heaped against Megan started upon her joining the royal family and then becoming famous. You see, first of all, Megan hasn't spoken or even seen her half sister Samantha, who is 16 or even 17 years older than Megan. You all know that, right? Well, she hasn't spoken to Megan in almost 10 years or more. Okay, let's just put it like that. Even then, it was a moment, okay? Just a moment, meet and greet. But Samantha, who has always been looking to jump on Megan's fame gravy train since her role in Suits that got escalated when she got with Prince Harry. <laughs> but let's back up a little bit. You see, the jealousy seeping from Samantha goes deep. Megan's family and her parents, Doria Raglan and Thomas Markle, moved in together a couple of years before Megan was born, along with Samantha and Thomas Jr., who had relocated to LA after living with their mom. Now, according to Vanity Fair, the family lived in Woodland Hills in the Valley, and Samantha and Thomas Jr. were unruly, yes. Oh, and guess what? Samantha Dreams was, guess, just guess. <laughs> yes, you guessed it of being an actress oh yes meanwhile thomas jr allegedly smoked pot and hung out with his friends i mean he was just spiraling out of control now according to good housekeeping raglan doria raglan and marco divorced when megan was about six years old after divorce megan went back and forth between the two living at times with her mom and other times with her father when she was a teenager when she started living with her father allegedly full-time but this is allegedly the bitterness between Samantha and her little sister Megan appears to have begun when Megan was in elementary school. According to Business Insider in 1990, their dad had a winning lottery ticket worth $750,000. Oh yes. And the winnings allowed Thomas to change his youngest daughter's life significantly. I mean, this is his time now to do what he wanted to do with his other two kids, but he wasn't financially stable enough to do it. So he was like, I'm not going to let this one go to waste. A father would do. Okay. Now, oh, I'm still not done yet. Megan Markle attended a private Catholic school at Northwestern University, becoming the first member of her family to go to college. This is what Vanity Fair is reporting. Megan's educational opportunities were possible because her dad had won the $750,000 ticket in California lottery when she was in grade school, okay? Now, it appears that Thomas Marco paying for his youngest daughter's private school and college may have lit the fuse that began the rift between the sisters. So what do you think bitter and jealous Samantha said? Well, according to the 2018 Vanity Fair feature, Big Bad Sister Samantha said that her dad paid for Megan's college expenses and Northwestern and that if Megan worked at all, it was only for extra shoe money and party money. So not true. Megan did a lot of volunteering and it was Samantha and her brother, Thomas Jr., who did the partying. Just want to point that out. Meanwhile, after college, 
May's life went one way while her family financially went another direction. Thomas Marco and Samantha Marco both allegedly made bad investments. Who was doing a party, huh? Eventually they claimed bankruptcy, both of them, by 2016. Now you see where I'm going with it. I'm sure you're getting a clear picture now, right? So, with all of this going on, we're right now at the year of 2017. And the engagement of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle was announced. Wonderful. This set the anger and vengeance against Meghan on full blast. Hence, Samantha releasing a tell-all titled The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister Part 1. This is a grown woman in her 50s writing a book about this. About their home life in January of 2021. Boasting that the book will feature the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Markle family. Oh, it gets uglier. Samantha had went on a rampage. She was being called and paid a lot by many UK blogs and media outlets to destroy Megan's character. She hates Megan. Meanwhile, Megan hasn't said anything toward about Samantha yet, despite her sister saying all these things about her. You see who's the true mean one here and a narcissist the one, you know what I mean? However, Megan Markle's father, Thomas, is again taking his aim this time at Oprah. Oh, yes. Now, keep in mind, Thomas wanted to interview Oprah after the whole uh, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry interview, but Oprah ignored him. Here's the report. Meghan Markle's father has ripped into Oprah Winfrey over her explosive interview with his daughter and Prince Harry. Thomas Markle, who has been estranged from Meghan for years, is now accusing Winfrey for using the couple to benefit her own career. Screw the fact that she's a billionaire and taking advantage of Harry while in a weakened state. <sighs> Here's what he said in a new interview with 60 Minutes Australia. I wonder how much they paid him for this interview. Oprah Winfrey, he says. For one, I think Oprah Winfrey is playing Harry and Meghan. I think she's using them to build her network and build her new shows. Uh -huh. I think she's taking advantage of a very wicked man and getting him to say things that you just shouldn't be saying on television. But yet what he's saying is supposed to be well-deserved and okay. Can we say hypocrite? But let me just continue. As you know, during a sit-down, Meghan and Harry make numerous claims against the palace, including accusations of racism and that Megan's cries for help with mental health issues went unanswered before they exited their roles in senior roles last year. Now, here is my analysis. And you pretty much know what I'm going to say with this Thomas Marco. And the fact that he feels that his opinion is needed and his point is valid, unresearched though, but valid because he knows everything. You know, Thomas should really research before making a comment, though, because Megan and Harry called Oprah. She didn't call them. They called her. And they did that interview for free. And there is nothing wrong with someone telling the truth, but apparently he has a problem with it because he slightly looked bad in their interview. So therefore, he felt the need to explain himself. I think Thomas needs to learn more about whom he's defending before siding with them. That's unless he's about as racist as they are. That's unless... Like I said before, he's getting paid for his support in random interviews. Even probably told what to say. Aside from that, he shouldn't be on national television yet again talking ill about his own daughter and her husband. What is wrong with him? Oh, and if Oprah was chasing the paper, she would have done your interview. <laughs> Hello? You know, I'm going to end it here because he's getting on my nerves and it breaks my heart for a father to, to do this to his own daughter. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes. I post them on there. I'm going to start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I need to communicate with my truth seekers. They are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay. I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. We also got a deeper look at the deep-rooted racism and slavery of the royal family and validation of what I've been saying for years. The royal family has had more enslaved people than America. They've killed more enslaved people than anyone, not to mention stolen more diamonds, gold, and more. 
then flaunts it for the world to see. Oh, and they've been paying the slave owners' compensations for years and recently stopped in 2015. Yes, 2015. Just seven years ago, almost eight. I bet this went over people's heads. It was too busy looking at Megan. Unbelievable. After the queen passed away, many people are wondering what will happen to the stolen diamonds that she kept for all these years. The Kohinoor diamond or the great star of Africa and the second star of Africa diamonds are often seen as the symbols of imperialistic history. The 105 karat Kohinoor diamond is one of the largest cut diamonds in the world and was originally mined in India thousands of years ago. Despite the diamond's complicated and mysterious history and many owners who claim to it across India, Pakistan, Iran and Afghanistan, it now adorns a crown created for Queen Elizabeth the queen mother to wear during her coronation as queen consort in 1937. It was handed over to the British royal family by South Africa's colonial authorities back in the day. Except now after her passing, they want it back. And although there are rumors that Camilla will wear the crown jewels in Charles' coronation, it's yet to be seen. It has been worn by Queen Victoria, Queen Alexandra, and even Queen Mary, so the history is already deep in British roots. However, its original roots in Africa and India should never be forgotten. What goes around comes around, sometimes in the form of a frisbee, sometimes as a haunting nightmare and sometimes in the form of a long, long bill. The Queen of Britain will soon receive one. It will be from Jamaica. The Caribbean country is asking the British Queen to cough up billions. What for? As reparations for slavery. Quick background, Jamaica was a British colony from 1655 to 1962. The colonizer introduced sugarcane cultivation in Jamaica and to support it, Britain introduced slaves. People were stolen from their homes and forced to work in the field. Many were shipped across to other countries as part of the transatlantic slave trade. In 1662, there were 400 slaves in Jamaica. By 1734, the number became 86,000. Between 1702 and 1749, nearly 300,000 slaves were imported to Jamaica. More than 100,000 were exported. It was only in the year 1807 that the British Parliament abolished slave trade. And it abolished slavery in 1837. By then, Britain had abducted and enslaved at least 12.5 million people. 12.5 million people enslaved. Many of them were Jamaicans. In 1833, Britain paid off 46,000 British slave owners. They were given 20 million pounds, almost 40% of that time's annual budget. What was this money for? To compensate for the quote unquote loss of human property. What about these human properties themselves? What did the government give them? Forget compensation, did Imperial Britain even offer an apology to the slaves and their families? The legacy of the slave trade still stings Jamaica. The country has been asking for justice for some time now. In 2015, then British Prime Minister David Cameron visited Jamaica. Jamaican leaders asked his government to pay reparations. Cameron was told to atone for the historical sin. The Prime Minister refused to even offer an apology. Here's what he said instead. David Cameron told Jamaica to move on. Reports published around that time revealed why he may have been so anti-reparation. Turns out one of Cameron's own family members was among many slave owners to have received compensation for loss of slaves. Jamaica did not give up its fight for justice, though. The culture ministry re minister recently said, and I'm quoting, we are especially pleased to announce that we have made further steps in our strides towards seeking reparatory justice for the victims and descendants of the transatlantic slave trade. The petition is being presented to the Queen of the UK and or the government of the UK. Now, we don't know how much Jamaica is asking for exactly, but here's what we can tell you. Britain has a history of denying reparation. In 2014, a coalition of 15 Caribbean countries presented a compensation plan to the UK. They wanted reparation for slave trade. A YouGov survey at that time found that 46% of the respondents in the UK opposed reparations. What about the government? The Foreign and Commonwealth Office said reparations are quote unquote, not the answer for the legacy of slave trade. May I then ask, what is? What's the answer for the legacy of slave trade? 
After the Second World War, Germany was made to compensate for the damages. In the years since, several companies have had to cough up money for oil spills, for nuclear power plant leaks, for gas leaks, for accidents. And here we are talking about millions of people being abducted and enslaved. But Britain refuses to atone for its inhumanity. And FYI, reparations for transatlantic slave trade could add up to $14 trillion. Of course, the UK refuses to pay. Just like it refuses to return stolen goods. Be it India's Kohinoor or Ethiopia's manuscripts. Treasures from British colonies decorate the crown and its properties today. They hang on the walls of its museums and palaces. And the UK sees nothing wrong with any of this. It feels no shame or the moral obligation to at least be apologetic, to at least apologize for its historic plunders. Today, Jamaica is setting a trend. It is asking for compensation for historical wrongs. Compensation it is entitled to. Compensation that 54 Commonwealth nations are also entitled to. The Great Britain ruled them all, looted them all. You see, the British Empire was the largest the world has ever seen. It ruled over parts of Africa, Asia, America, Australia and New Zealand. It squeezed all of them. From Africa, it abducted, trafficked and enslaved people stole Benin bronzes. From Greece, it stole Elgin marbles. From Ethiopia, manuscripts. And from India, it drained $45 trillion. It is time for reparation. And while the world comes together to make China pay, it must not forget to also demand accountability from the British Crown. Hey, my truth seekers, did you know that I have a blog? A blog that I post personally selected stories onto. I also have an online journal where I give you a peek at my personal life and more. So please go to the truthshowchannel.blog. All the links are below. This video wasn't to take down the royal family. It was their vengeance against the media and the lies and vendetta they've had against Meghan and Harry since he left the royal prison and then blamed Meghan for it. Yes, they blame Meghan for it. Despite Harry wanting to leave that family for years, that he was bluntly saying this for years. There was also a point where Harry said, I'm my mother's son, meaning he's more like Diana and less like Charles. William is like Charles, and their feelings about their late mother, Diana, differ. William has been soiled and brainwashed with lies about Diana from the family who may have allegedly killed her. Also, despite the UK press hatred, the docuseries were great. It was very great. And millions of people view it all over the world, despite the lies you may read in the media. I'm just saying. With that said, it's safe to say, stop believing the press. They get paid to hate for more views and clicks. Okay? Hey, don't miss out. Click the subscribe and like button. Also, don't forget the bell button and then select all so that you can get notifications for every video I upload on the Truth Show channel and the Truth Show channel deluxe. Never miss out, y'all. Here's a brief word from my sponsor. The world's falling apart. Every day, another shocking headline makes you wonder what tomorrow will bring. That's why those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. I'm talking about getting your family some high quality emergency food from my Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply is a nation's leading preparedness company. They've been in business for going on 14 years now, and they've served millions of American families. Now they want to help you by giving you $50 off their popular four-week emergency food kit. Oh, yes. You get four weeks of food per person with meals designed to give you more than 2,000 calories a day. By the way, this food stays fresh up to 25 years in proper storage, so it will be there when you need it. Other food goes bad first, you know what I mean? So don't wait, go to prepare with my link here with the truth and claim your four week emergency food kit. You will save $50 per kit if you act now. So prepare with me at preparewithtruth.com. Don't wait, do it today. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share and like and hit that bell so you can get a notifications on when I do post my videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.